Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. This is part three of the Skull with Fire tutorial. This is the sample panel for the hot rod that I'll be doing later this year. Let's get back into it. If you haven't already, be sure to check out parts one and two so that you can see how I got up to this stage in the artwork. Now using the bright yellow, I'm going to go back and add some more detailing to the skull. Just pick out some of those highlights just in here in here and I'm going to do another layer of fire as well then I'm going to tone everything down with some tangerine candy and possibly as well I might add some red candy but we'll see how we go with the tangerine because as I mentioned in the previous um, parts that the customer actually wants this one to be a bit more orangey red so less of the yellow so this time I want to be Nice and sharp. Be a little bit more accurate now with the highlight because as I mentioned I want this to be the final highlight if possible. We'll see how we go. So in order to be nice and sharp I'm up very close with my airbrush. I'm using the Iwata CMC Plus. This is actually an airbrush that I've had since 2005. So I find the longer that you have them, the better they get. Kind of just wear them in. You can see I'm not going over absolutely everything that I did in the previous highlight tone. If you went over the same part of every single tone that you laid down, then um, you're going to eliminate what you've been doing. So kind of pointless then to do multiple layers. The texturing now, I'm just freehanding some of that in. Brighten up on this side a little bit. So you can see I'm cutting it in nice and fine and then blending out from there. And that's probably where I'm going to leave it for the moment for that one. As I said, I don't want to do too much. I've got to bring the fire in as well. But I'm not going to tone back over this layer now with the uh, that yellow candy. Instead, I'm going to use the tangerine so that we can really get that orangey look in there. So if this is the first time um, having a go at uh, fire, I'd probably recommend trying one of our other tutorials first and mastering just the fire and then um, come back to this and uh, give it a go with the skulls because it is a little bit more work and a little bit more challenging to put the skulls in there. So I'd recommend yeah, just getting your flame technique down pat and then coming back and revisiting this tutorial and then you can give it a go with the skulls in there. 
Got a bit of fluff there from the tack rag. Again, just doing those dots, the stippling, to get some of that texture in. I'm not grabbing the texture template this time, just doing it freehand, just to break it up a little bit. I think using a balance of both, or a combination of both, should I say, works nicely rather than just being totally reliant on freehand or totally reliant on the, on the template. I mean, sure, you can do everything freehand. There's nothing wrong with that. But, um, you know, when you're doing it for a living, time is money. And sometimes it's a lot quicker to just grab that template and put the texture in. Why spend all that extra time trying to keep it super clean and neat just so that you can say you've done it freehand? I mean... It's, you know, that's something actually that I used to do. I was so focused on doing that when I first started airbrushing. I was really kind of anti-templates, but um, templates give the artwork a nice look. Makes it quicker if you, you know, for something like the skulls, I mean, sure, I could just freehand them all in, but again, it takes a lot longer than just holding a template into place, spraying it for a couple of seconds, and you've already got your skull outline. So they're just tools like anything else tools to make life a bit easier so why not make your life easier but obviously totally up to the individual you know if you want to do everything freehand we'll go for it you can still use these methods and adapt it to whichever method you wish to use but I think um, the use of templates is a great thing for beginners you know, there's a lot of people that are just starting out and um, a lot of people that can't draw as well. So that's where templates do really help them out. Okay, so getting a bit of a better look now. The highlights are looking good, so happy with that. So now I'm going to continue on and uh, work with this colour to create another layer of flame. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, I'm going to tone this all down in a minute.
just coming in with these uh, mini fire tool templates just to get a couple of defined edges and in, licks into those areas of the eye sockets just to sharpen up bits and pieces these are really handy because they're nice and tiny little curves so you can be a little bit more concentrated with your highlights and then back with the bigger ones for the layering of the fire So if this is the first time watching one of our videos, then welcome for all of our regular viewers. Welcome back. I do hope that you're enjoying this tutorial so far. If you are, by all means, give it the thumbs up, share it out, and let's build this airbrushing community together. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing and tap on that bell icon because that will notify you every time I put out new content and that way you won't miss out on any new videos. Okay, so I'm just continuing on with this layer. You can see I'm brightening up certain areas, just the hot spots. Um, I'm also stepping back regularly to have a look. And then what I'll do is I'll bring in the tangerine candy again. And we start to tone this down a little bit. I'm just going to hit all these first, all the edges that I want sharp and obviously making the most of these templates to get them in nice and easily. So a few little marks on the here which um, occurred in the last video. I actually uh, tack ragged a bit too early, but never fear, this is just a sample panel and um, it will be fixed once I put the first coats of clear on. It will need to be flow coated anyway, so I'll seal it in and then I can do any touch ups that are necessary and you won't see that by the end of it. So the mini ones are getting pretty handy to use actually, just to get some of those real sharp defined ones in there and some nice little licks.
Just hit a couple of these licks and then that'll be pretty much it, I think, for this layer. Right. Okay, so before I tone everything down with the tangerine candy, I want to come back in with uh, black and just finish off these skulls. So I'm going to use it to pull out a little bit more detail in them. This is also going to give me a nice contrast. And then when I lay the candy over it, I've already finished that, that darker tone. Again, just adding some texture in freehand up nice and close. This is House of Colour Black over reduced. Might even go a bit thinner because it's spitting a little bit on me. Just using that black to pull out some of those key areas and give the skull a little bit more dimension. Because of all the overspray from all the previous la layers, the um, even the dark sections now have gone like almost a bit of a mid-grey. So it's allowing me to come back in with this black and I can see what's going on. As you can see, it doesn't take much to tweak it and give it that contrast. You don't have to go over everything, just focus on a couple of those key areas. Remember the where the brightest part of that flame is. Bringing some of that texture back into the lighter part of the skull where the highlight is. So just to get that more of a 3D appearance.
Now, obviously, uh, I've mentioned this in the other parts of this uh, tutorial. Usually, when I use automotive paints like this House of Colour or DNA, whatever the brand may be, I always wear a uh, proper respirator. But because I wanted to do this video and film it in real time and basically speak, like give you the instructions while I'm airbrushing, I suppose much like a live stream, I'm all mic'd up, so obviously can't be wearing a respirator. So I've been putting the respirator on in between when I'm spraying the candies and any of the intercoat clear, but for this part, I'm not wearing one obviously, so just keep that in mind. I'm not recommending that you spray without a respirator on when you're doing this at home or in your studio. This paint is toxic, so you don't want to be breathing it in if you can avoid it. So. So again, just a bit of stippling, a bit of freehand texturing in there. Break it up a little bit. done with this one so not only does it add that extra detail but it really pulls the skulls back into focus because as you're doing layer upon layer you're getting more and more overspray and layers of colour on the original toning that you did so this way it just resharpens everything up again it's like any artwork when you add that final layer in and it just makes it pop kind of looks almost blurry until you get to that stage. some of that black back into the original licks will give the um, impression that the flame lick is starting from that section here and blending back around so you're just moving with the direction of the stroke.
So up nice and close, keeping that trigger finger pressed down. And moving with it and building over the, because uh, it's a lot thinner now, I'm building over the stroke if I want it to be a bit darker. Okay, so almost done with these skulls. Let's go back and check over them and tweak anything that I want before I add the candy. Pretty good, ready to go for candy. So just take a quick close up look at these skulls before I add that tangerine in. where I've added the black, just to give you a better idea. So now using the tangerine candy, I want to tone everything down. Just give it a quick wipe with the tack rag. All right, so I'm gonna start around here. Just I like to kind of work in off the edges and let the overspray tint it rather than going straight over that lighter section straight away because kind of still trying to keep a little bit of the highlight visible. I've added a little bit more reducer as well. Just so I can control it a little bit better, it's not as harsh. 
I'm going to bring that candy in over the skull and have it tint over the dark areas as well as that mid-tone so that where it goes from dark into the light. Re go over the eye sockets for the glow. A couple of spots where it's where the highlights overlapping, and then here, you know, to create a little bit of depth. So by adding tangerine in these areas here, it's going to lift up the highlighted section and create a bit more depth. Taking the edge off some of these flame lit, uh, taking the edge off some of these embers. We're just uh, moving very carefully. I don't want to go too heavy and knock out everything. Again, going over the eye sockets and the nostrils in the skull just to give them that glow. It's the beauty of candy, it's transparent so it allows you to go over areas even with the texture. You're not going to eliminate it. So we're getting there, taking the edge off that yellow. Really need to get some clear on here to see how it's all going to look once it's um, got the two pack clear on because that really does change it. Brings out all the candy colours, really gives you the depth. So hopefully I'll get some clear on this soon. And then, um, yeah, once it's cleared, you can always, it'll need flow coating anyway, but if you wanted to adjust anything, you could. So the clear protects this layer and then you wet sand it with either 800 or 1200 depending on um, 
what sort of base you've got. For this, it's a sample panel. It's a, it's um, usually I use just use a 800. But if you were going over, say, a metallic base, I'd probably recommend a 1200, wet and dry. Just a little bit less aggressive, less chance of um, scratching or seeing visible scratches later on in the base coat. But this is why I let a professional do all this for me. They know what they're doing, I just stick to the airbrushing. I get a lot of questions regarding clearing and what to do and I can pretty much help you out with what I know but I'm not a professional spray painter. I just let them do all that. Even with this hot rod I'll do all the airbrushing and they'll clear it. This sample panel I might throw some clear on myself. So that way it will just get done a bit quicker and because it's a sample it's not as crucial. It's really just to see if the customer's happy with the flames, the colouring and whether he's happy with the skulls in there. So we might even need to do more panels, I'm sure there will be. So probably get some more tutorials like this. So continuing to add that tangerine into those areas to darken them off and just re-brighten them actually so not really darken them it's probably the wrong word even though candy does go darker as you add more and more but we're really just deepening and brightening so when I say deepening it even though I'm brightening up these sections and adding more tangerine it's deepening that shadow Because in relation to this colour, that's still really dark. And then we're using, I'm using that tangerine to like deepen these flames. So push them into the background. Take the edge off it. brighten these eye sockets as well so moving around as well with this color not sort of trying to smash one area too quickly you want to try and avoid getting it a run or spidering out at this stage You can really notice now it's knocking out a lot of that yellow. So fair call if you know you're watching this and think, oh yeah, but the yellow was good. That's fair enough. But I have to do what the customer wants.
couple of little bits more, a couple of little bits to tone down and then I'm going to leave it I think and get some clear on this and have a good look at it. So it's definitely, I don't think, don't think I'll bother coming back in with the red candy, I think the orange has done enough. So here is the completed panel with some clear on it. Still needs to be flow coded, but at least now you can see how much that clear changes it. Makes all the colors really pop, gives, gives it a sense of depth. So a lot of people ask me what flow coding means. Basically flow coding is uh, you wet sand the clear that's already on there to flatten it all off. So I'd use sort of a 800 or a 1200 wet and dry sandpaper and then another couple of coats of two pack clear over the top. And what that does is by sanding it, you get any of the little imperfections out of it. It also gives you a chance to do any touch ups if necessary. And then you get a nice smooth finish. Just laying it flat so you can have a look at and just see some of those black bits that I did in part one. So they're showing through, just a little bit of texture. So I do hope that you enjoyed checking out this video tutorial. Check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.